Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dwarves of Khazadum campaign. And before we commence, I would just like to point out here at this point, uh, I think this is a fantastic idea. In the comments in the previous video, Zeno, Zeno uh, asked, why not have some kind of like viewer interactivity, something like um, like viewer missions. So if I quickly just give the example given, was that, uh, for example, Erebor is besieged and pressure, uh, pressured by the Gundabad orcs. Send an army, the size is your decision, uh, whatever, and uh, you can go over there and help them out. And for some nondescript, uh, I don't know, reward. But, I mean, right now I think it is actually under siege. But, of course, we would first have to get some spies in and around certain locations. We are, of course, also allied to the Northern Dunedain. Perhaps we could he help them in some way. Uh, because the argument being that if we just trounced Gundabad at this point, which we probably could because they are our only enemies, what are we going to face after that? You know, because there's the Dwarves of Erebor over here, of course. And then over here it's Angmar. But they are going to be slowly smashed by the... Dwarves of Dered Luin. So, uh, give me your thoughts on that, and uh, we we shall go on from there. And also, then uh, back to this episode. Then, I I did think basically soon after I finish recording. Actually, all these guys, we're not gonna wait around for them to get retrained for plus one armor. You know, they just need to get going. It's gonna take them ages before they get over there, and. I think, uh, you know, we will eventually have this up and running. Like, it's it's going to be up and running. But, like, we can get these guys killed and then we can get some more units. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. And perhaps we, we might have Baal in here with this, perhaps for some mission at this point. I don't know. Um, right, so is there anything we need to get at this point? We've got barracks here. We've already got all that we really want. I'm not the biggest fan of... Just getting loads of spearmen, but uh, Kazad volunteers there all going. Uh, we'll retrain these guys since they're there. If there's anything we can actually train. No, not really. I mean, we, let's put the volunteers in there. And everything here is charging up. Oh, yeah, get them retrained. We do have some units. We've got a general there. We've got... Uh, no, these are the only ones that are on their way. Oh, no, there's these guys here as well. Of course, we can't attack without a general. Um, and it is summertime. But Oin over here in Yolstone is in... Uh, well, he's in need of some aid. And we will get him some aid eventually. But I think he could probably hold out there for a time. Because, you know, defensive battles as dwarves. Well, as anyone really is pretty easy. But um, what are our diplomats doing? Just uh, a quick check. Let's bring you guys... Or you, Ori, down here. We'll just have a look in this general... A general area and the other diplomat. I think we're going to go and have a chat with the folks. Who, oh, we can't even get over there. That's annoying. We'll just go south, see what's up. And then finally, if we've got any spies, how many? We've got one spy, two spy. Let's get three spy. I spy with my little eye. If we can get another one as well, then we could get loads of them dotted around. Okay, let's end the turn. And with that noise, you know that we are besieged. Right, let's get... Uh, oh, I like his cloak. Nice and red. Uh, let's get him over here. Let's go and have a look at Austin Athil. Because, ooh, Gandalf the Grey. He's coming over with Dunedain Cavalry. Uh, pretty solid unit. A very, very good unit. Uh, but uh, here's a thought. What if... What if we were to aid Gandalf... There's like a nice little mission for us because, like, we don't, we're not currently at war with the Dunlendings, but we are allied to Northern Dunedain. And on top of that, Balin, of course, is good friends with Gandalf. So perhaps he'd go and help them. Of course, we would allow them to make the attack, but there's no guarantee that they're actually going to come down here and attack. But let's. Oh, Go in that direction, perhaps. So, so you're, we're just going to keep on moving in that direction. Why are you going that way? Just go this way. Um, yeah. So I think this this could be a really good way of you know 
obviously it's going to make the campaign slightly... Oh, my days, we lose so much money. It's going to make the campaign slightly longer, but also, like, this this could be over very quickly otherwise, of course. And uh, that is naturally not in my interests. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, nor should it be in yours, because you should want to see a good campaign. Um, so let's have a very small force of very elite dwarves there. And that's going to be a token gesture to aid the Northern Dunedain. Of course, um, if they were to take this and kind of beat Dunlan back, that would be quite, quite nice for us as well. So three grand there. We're still making some money. And on Enerod has become a stronghold. Fantastic. So, as you can see there, that is just what a Dwarven Stronghold looks like. And should we let these roads... Yeah, okay then. That's fine. And then after that, we'll get some... Or do we want the Catapult Maker? I'd rather have the Catapult Maker. The roads aren't that necessary here, because like, it doesn't provide a massive bonus. But we do need to make sure we've got a lot of money to actually then offer to the... To the elves. Um, but, of course, you can see here, Yulestone. What do they have? What do they have? Ooh, they've got more Black Shield Warriors. So this is another reason why perhaps we shouldn't just rush Gundabad. I mean, I'm not saying that we're, you know, we're not going to just sit here and do nothing at all. But we get to see some of their units. These are just, you know, their basic units, yes. But I'd kind of want to see some of the half trolls, you know. Some of the snow trolls in action. Some of, like, our elites versus their elites. And, uh, well, we are just going to sit in there. If they want to... I, I, I firmly believe we'd absolutely smash that in a defensive. But if they want to come as well, then that would give us the move the room to maneuver into that reinforcement range with those units and of course we've got these other oh, ones on the way which is pretty snazzy because uh, we want to be using these guys not those trashy miners and whatnot and then finally let's just have a look here to make sure yeah well, we've got Khazad volunteers there do we want them no not really uh, did I get the other spy from over here no, so you're going to go in this direction, just to have a look at uh, the situation at Erebor. Nice. Yes, my king. So, again, one more time. <laughs> you see, like, these uh, notifications you get of Fornost being assaulted. Perhaps that would be... Like, the pretext for a mission. Like, you have ten turns to send an army over to Fornost and aid our ally, make sure that they don't lose it. And then perhaps you get like two grand or something. I don't know. That kind of thing. And that would add to the fact that uh, we are solely in it for the mountains. Or perhaps once we've taken the mountains, then then that could be like some way to change it up later on. Um, I don't know. This is, this is literally a new idea. Oh, let's take those merchant cab actually, yeah. Um, so where did Gandalf go? At your service. This oh dear. Me, Gandalf has oh, deserted us. For oh, God's sake, Gandalf. Well, uh, let's put I these guys it. just in that I fort there. And if he comes back, then perhaps we can I, sort that out. But we'll put Parlin back in there because he's making so much money. Uh, maybe we'll send Gror over. Maybe Gror is the one to do that. Yes, but uh, Gandalf looks like he has I left. See, um... Yeah. Yikes. Maybe we'll just make the attack for them or something and then give it over. Right, so, um, new family member. Okay, so that's not a coming of age yet or anything like that. Still making money despite all these armies out and about. And it's not like we've got... Um, hmm. It's like the Anduin is getting involved and they've taken off from over here. They have not... Proceeded with the siege. That is un weird. It's very weird. Um, <laughs> perhaps because Anduin's starting to pick up now because we took out a couple of their armies. Perhaps now that they've taken their capital, they're being able. They're able to push in this direction. But I don't know. Of course, we. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it does present a few questions about our expansion, though. So there is that. But oh, and a. Candidate for adoption. Well, yeah, we do need pretty... Oh, and he's a 
I first read that as a proper dwarf, but he's dauntless, and I do like... Not that it really makes much difference to us, but... Ooh, and he's a night fighter, talent with numbers. All very useful. Um, but you do want a proper dwarf. You want a proper dwarf at the elm. Right, come on, uh, Mr. Spy. Get on over here. Don't be getting blocked. I nearly thought that was um, Erebor had fallen to the Darlings. Right, so Erebor, of course, is not under siege anymore. Anything like that. Construction report. There we go. Oin's Gate. Army Barracks. Let's... Oh, my days. Look at that. Ooh. This is like... Um, like, like, I don't know. This is like third age total war porn almost. <laughs> it's like, look at all that infantry. Oh my days. Like, we could just, we could just take them all. Maybe we should. Oh my, da oh wow, it's just so good. Um, <laughs> uh, right, so next after that, we're going to go for, oh, we could get the Hall of the Seven. That is... Nice. So we get access to some Erebor units, Erebor infantry, King's Axes. They're pretty decent. Massive charge for a Dwarven unit. And you get the Pikes and Blacklock Engineers. Basically the only worthwhile ranged unit. And I think I'm going to get that actually because you also get free upkeep and, well, the recruitment slot mainly. So we'll get that in and then after that we're going to go for the archery range. Okay, okay, and that's almost done there. That's almost done. Oh, we could actually bring these guys down and get retrained then. My king. Yeah, let's do that. Come on, come on down. Forward. Right, um, today, right, with the spy then, let's just have a look here, because Sithuin is somewhere around here. And where is Gandalf? Gandalf! Where are you, Gandalf? Perhaps we need to we need to start intervening. We're gonna train some units. Okay, we're gonna train some units and we're gonna send them into battle. So you can't really get anything from over here. Dunland tend to have quite a lot of armor. They tend to have some cavalry, so we do need to be getting something that's good against cavalry. So get them. And yeah, we don't need to think too hard about this, but I don't really want to get Sons of the Fallen because, like, they cost a lot. They tend to have a lot of armor. They do also have armor piercing, which does make getting armored units yourself a bit meh. But we are going to get those, and we are going to get them because they're extremely good. And the Kazadim Reclaimers will not get them. I think we'll just get them and... We can get them. Yeah, we'll go for that. And then Balin is going to march out along with them. And we're going to go and take Ostinathil. Right, we're going to take Ostinathil. Do we give it... Do we give it to the Northern Dunedain? Or do we offer it up to the High Elves again? For potentially Zag Kala? Or do we take Ostinathil... And Byrig, and offer them up as well as Bruinost. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Because, yeah, if we get the Northern Dunedain to kind of, you know, take control of this area, and we have a really strong ally, it would aid us a lot. Because, um, well, then we don't have to deal with it. We are kind of the king makers almost. Uh, not not an intended pun or anything like that but we can kind of decide who becomes the boss in this area and speaking of the boss we've got this new general here and i mean that has got that's got a lot of units in but there's like no no men no orcs in the battalion and there's lagrad there and this is mountainous this is scatter's gap let me just check that this is indeed Mountainous, we can attack there in our region. We're going to go and take Lagrad out. It's always a good idea to take out generals. And uh, we're going to give give Nain a taste for battle. And we're going to try and see, actually, what kind of... How he does one-on-one -on -one against Lagrad. Does he have taste for any flesh? Oh my god, this guy's a... What an absolute mag... Mad... Grad. That remark... 
that um <laughs> can't even talk rhymes with lad and oh he's scarred so he's gonna have a lot of extra hit points um and what do they have oh they've got archers basically Attack. The enemy have brought up more men. and Hope they the appear to be lack. well let's give him a couple volleys see if they come towards us and from over there, that is where the reinforcements are coming from. So let's just put our... We'll put our archers over there. And they will hopefully be able to pick off... Oh, there's mountain orc hunters there. Where's the... Oh, the wogs are all the way back here. Um, okay, that's fine. Well, make sure to take them out. Looks like we're doing a good job of that. Excellent stuff. These guys have very little armor as you can see i think yeah these guys actually have zero armor so any arrows should really kill them i don't know how this guy's managing to shrug it off snow orc raiders snow orc scouts okay um where's our general general come over here you guys spin around so you don't get skewered and oh god no yeah don't start firing over there <laughs> please no Please no. Uh, yeah, you keep firing at them. Looks like we're taking them out all right. But the other unit, I'd like you to shoot these Snow Orc scouts in the face. If you could. And where are they going? They're going all the way over there. Hmm. Well, it looks like this flank has been completely destroyed which is fantastic and perhaps we'll shoot that one i don't know what these wogs are doing but they look like they're just gonna chill over here and do nothing i do like the look of them though i don't like the the sounds that they make though they they're very loud <laughs> right so we're gonna march up to to lagrad over here we've made it into position Commence firing. I mean, they're going to come out and play, no doubt. But, uh, in fact, Ballister, make sure you're firing at the General's unit because they are heavily armoured. And we don't really have a whole lot against that. And, right, and now that they pop up, we should be able to start firing at them a little bit with our archers. Getting a few cheeky kills here or there. But, yeah, these trees do actually block missiles a little bit. But look at that getting so many yeah just stay right there this is why you don't want to use flaming missile because flaming missile is pretty inaccurate but uh we're skewing two or three with each bolt oh my days absolute slaughter well nain might have a, a really good time up against the mountain guard then at this rate especially if they don't actually want to come and attack us uh from behind the wogs are coming so you get on over there be sure to take them out, because we don't want to be moving our front line over there or anything like that. Oh, you're actually out of ammunition. Ah, well. Uh, you're going to get hit. Because the terrain was not fantastic. Look how our cowardly foe but, runs. okay, that's fine. Nice. And uh, what's going off over here? Let's slow this down, in fact. Right, uh, they're down to 22. 22 is all that they've got. Right, get it, and you can just stop, and we're going to send in the general, hopefully we don't take too many losses here today, fingers crossed, these are all of our, these are still travellers, these are, you can tell they've got the uh, knapsack on the back, I really do like that detail, it's such a simple thing, but it really adds to the theme, come on Nain. Come and smash this mountain guard. So there's, what are they? There's 17 and 26. You are 11 and 34. So that's a pretty, pretty decent. Uh, and obviously there's far more of us than there are of them. But yeah, we're not the best at flanking. We're just so slow. But in he comes. Zenith guard. This is the only guy that we really want to kill. I mean, everything else will get killed. Anyway. Right, and in you come, miners. Sorry, laborers, I keep calling them that. 
by their old names. I do like these guys. The, the Snowwalk Raiders have got really nice weapons. I do like it. They're reminiscent of the Scourge Raiders, I think they were called. Of Angmar from before. Before when they were um, still an orcish faction. But we can, we can uh, speed this up. Because we can't even see the Mountain Guard anymore anyway. But we are sure to get them killed. There's two of them left. So it's general, the General and the Banner Carrier. And we're just bringing in the archers over here because uh, we want to make sure that if they do start running, that we will have the men to actually cover it. Right, don't don't bother chasing them anymore because it is just the general. We just need to kill that guy and everything will be trashed. And down he goes. Excellent. Lagrad has been taken prisoner and killed. We lost 31 brave dwarves, 120 kills for the Khazad volunteers, and uh, yeah, we didn't lose that many, to be honest. Only 4%, but the Ballister getting so many kills. Nain has had his first taste of battle, but it may not be the last for him, because he's got quite the difficult journey. I reckon we'd be able to beat that, but if we do fight that, will we have the movement range to go over to that bridge? Because then, if we get caught out and not on a bridge up against that, I mean, I'm not saying we'd even be able to beat that even now. That is tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Because if we do get attacked by that, we've only got a chance on the bridge. And we can't be taking too many losses now either, so I'm not even going to go fight that. We're going to wait for that one to move away. Um, I'm not too bothered about those two, but that army there, because you can I'm see they've got Black you. Shield Warriors, they will annihilate us. They've got a baluster, they've got really good archers as well, and we've just got kind of trash, trashy units. Um, we would not see such a, a big victory as we did in the previous bridge battle over here with Oin because they have actually got a lot of armor as well. So the three missile attack is not going to do a whole lot. Um, but, yeah, I think everything that has been done for this turn. Let's move on. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, no, no. It's just two small forces coming against us. Ooh. Oh dear, we are once again outnumbered more than two to one. Oh jeez, they've got pale Uruks. Um, yeah, they're they're decent. They're decent. Please no. Oh oh. Well, actually no. Black Shield Warband. They're the spear variety. They're not too bad. Right, once again, the same as last time. Like, where else are we gonna have? as good a chance as this. These guys do not have much armor. They've got no shields. We can hope to do the same thing again and we've got the baluster. Nain might die though. There is that. Glory, we, attack. we know from last time what the enemy is likely to do and we need to have more units over here than on the other side. And actually, this is pretty good that they've got reinforcements coming. It's going to give us more time. So, our general is the only thing that we're going to have in reserve. So, to start firing immediately, the Pale Uruks are, are at the front. So, do please be firing at them. By the way, this is what they look like. Um, heavily inspired by the Hobbit films. And if we could just skewer... Are we going to... We we're firing. Come on. Come on. Fire. Our foes appear to be gaining the oh, please fire. <laughs> we're going to be on the downhill slope potentially here. So we're going to be having a bit of a disadvantage over here. So, oh, I heard it pop off there. And miss. How are you missing? How are you missing? Perhaps we should just, just aim into the mass. Okay, and you boys just start firing already. And also, I did have a question in the last one. Um, because the AI does like to push, 
Um, it's they said basically pop all your units like here facing in that direction and that is okay but then you know you if you've got a ballister here that's shooting in this direction you're gonna get a lot of friendly fire and like these arrows would be potentially hitting more of our units in the back so that's why we're not going for that let's have these guys fighting back pale rooks right general you're going to have to catch these guys if they start overfilling or filling through here. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, don't be firing over there at that unit. General, you're going to go in there. We probably skewed a few of our own men with that stray baluster bolt. Just fire straight into that. How are our missile units doing? Potentially as well, if that other army takes a really long time to get here, um, we might be able to withdraw. I think already destroyed this army, so that's pretty good. But these Pale Uruks, we have no answer to them. Um, and these guys are taking a hella damage. Yeah, those Pale... Oh, God. We can't really use the Ballister to target the Pale Uruks anymore, either. Perhaps. Uh, maybe we can. Maybe we can. I mean, that's probably the only thing that's going to kill them, anyway. Um, but I don't want to come out defensive either, because if they move too much forward, then we won't have a good shot anymore. So it's kind of the kind of like that. But I think we can defeat this army. We're not going to have the ammunition, though. I don't think for the second second army. But yeah, you see the ballister bolt just fly through there. We are on times two speed. Oh my days! Look at that. Got so many there. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, this side is definitely suffering up against those mountain orc hunters. And actually, our general as well is not having the best of time. Z uh, just both of you come off defensive. Yeah, we're going to definitely be thinking of how can we get out of this fight. Um, should we use... I think one of you has to come over here to aid our general. Yeah. What does it look like there? It's not actually looking too bad. I think now our ballister can just stop. We'll stop with the ballister. Just in case we do need them still. But... Yeah, it's the second army. The second army's worse, I think. So if we can just defeat these guys. What's their morale like? Steady. Mountain Orc Hunters there. It looks like we are beating them back over here. There's not too many of them left. Right, you guys stop firing now as well. Because we might just be getting friendly fire. Not too I think I think Nain has done pretty well here. Um, right, if we can just get a few volleys here. Perhaps they'll run away. Nice, nice. Maybe another volley. One more. Okay, that's enough. Now just go into melee. Oh, jeez. That is not a good sight. We're going to target the Mountain Orc Hunters. They're already wavering. That's good. Right, let's kill him. Make sure he gets killed. Nice. Excellent. Really, really good. And those Pale Uruks then, where are they? Have they, have they already died? There they are. Oh, they're routing. Astonishing scenes here. Or maybe there is still hope. Maybe there is still hope. We have decided to hold our ground and oh dear they've got mountain orc hunters all these guys be on defensive we've got what 37% of our uh, number remaining however much of that is in our archers and yeah they should get loads of kills on these Mountain Orc Hunters, and they absolutely need to. Do these have armor? They've got two units, two points of armor. And our Ballister, 
which has been here this entire time. Now is the time. And if we can pull off this win, it might not even matter for a, ho a whole lot. It might not even matter a whole lot, because if that other army swings around and then attacks us, then we're screwed. So, <laughs> um, the danger here is, of course, the Mountain Orc Hunters. Then, secondary to that is probably these Black Shield Warband. Even though they're only spearmen, we've got, like, there's just so many of them. They'll take ages to die. So, we need this Ballister to shoot well and to shoot true. As we also need these guys to die. And they were already down to 108. Look at that. Astonishing scenes. Um, perhaps we can send our general over there. Because it looks like they are just piling through this side. Which is dangerous because... How is he? Is he is he already bloodied up? No, he's, he's pretty fine. He's pretty fine. And dwarves do tend to have a lot of hit points. So let's put him over there. And send him in if need be. But it looks like... Mount yeah. Maybe we won't, actually, because we will have no way of getting him out of that. If they do decide to go for it. Something changes in the course of battle, but defeat seems almost yeah, certain. it's... Oh, but that is the only chance of victory. We have to be in there. We, we have to be on this side. We need to keep them clumped up. So, you guys need to get in there. This is our last defense... Oh, and these guys are out of ammunition, though. So that's good. Um, ish. Right. Get in there. Just, just run in. And hope that you don't die. And hope that the Ballister wins the day for us. This kind of really is the last hope. I mean, we've got, we've got the archers going in as well. And the Ballister just shooting down the chute. Only half the right, in you go. Remains. Attack. Archers out of ammunition. Yep, come on over. Actually, you come over here then. And aid from this direction. They've already got their swords out and attack. That's what we're working with. Hopefully, just I, I just really hope our general doesn't get picked off immediately. Because that would suck. And, yeah, that's a pretty good line of fire. I am wondering whether or not just to use the flaming ammo, because it might give us a boost to them, or, like, it might nerf their morale a little bit. But that looks like it's getting a lot of kills, which is good. What? Where are they going? Just, just attack what's in front of you. Don't, don't go in uh, too deep. Might awaken the Balrog. Right, come on over. The battle is very much in our favor. Yeah, that. If we remain so we have, we've got like fast, one bolt left hours. from the Ballister. Please be good. Or is it out? Are we going to see one more fly in? Doesn't look like it. So that is it. That is it for all that we have got. We might even send these guys into melee. Oh. That was the last one. Hopefully it got a lot of kills. Come on over then. We might use you in melee. How's it looking? We've lost 50% of our number. 89% of the enemy has gone down. But remember that there are two armies here. It does look like they are slowly going down, but they've still got a lot in there. Snow Orc, Spears, Raiders. It looks like the Black Shields have already been killed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they, they've actually, they've just ran away. So this is it. It's just our archers against them. Oh my days. Let's make sure that these definitely do get wiped out because it's unreliable on the number. We'll get uh, as many as we can, but we're not as fast as them, so there's no point in chasing them. Wow. That 
was quite impressive, I think. Absolutely fantastic. That was quite a muted response from me, actually. <laughs> I'm slightly in shock that we won there. Dwarven Ballister, 301 kills. We did get a fair amount of friendly fire, but of course, they've got no shields. It's to be expected. Probably a few got skewered. But the Zenith Guard, 164, 345, 356. Wow. Really, really good numbers. However, now that we... Yes, we won uh, terrific, terrific wins there. <laughs> that makes no sense. But now that army is completely trashed. Absolutely trashed. Like, it's not useful for its intended or its, you know, its purpose. Um, Erebor has been once again besieged. And there is... King Dane, by the way, he gets Sons of the Fallen. They, their next armor upgrade is Telcharin Plate. And then they get uh, Aulian Plate and then Mithril Plate. But, yeah. So, there's an idea that perhaps we could send an expeditionary force through here and then up there. I don't know. Uh, end of turn report. Uh, we, we're still making money. Kazadum got the Telcharin armor. And now it is very... I kind of should we just get the barracks? Let's get the barracks. It's four turns. And then we can get the Hall of Aule. And then... Because there's still another tier of barracks after that. So, having uh, another place for that is pretty swell. But... This is a difficult... Difficult situation. We do kind of want Framsburg. We're going to have to wait another turn. It's like they just keep coming at us with these armies that are now better they are just straight up better than our armies and our forces are quite far away um ish there's malgash there that is the big army that we were kind of fearing perhaps we might end up having to aid our allies with that let's send uh you guys just go go there and you're going to go up north along with them how long? One turn and then we get the army barracks there. And we might get another unit placed into this recruitment pool. Which would be fantastic. Then we won't have to rely so much on everything that happens over here. Let's have, an eye, let's have a, a look here at what Dunland's doing. They are just obviously not giving us much attention. But they are moving in here. We can have a quick look at what their army compositions are like. But, yeah, they have a lot of these Dunlending Warbands. And it looks like they don't have any post barracks event units here just yet. No. This is like their stock, stock units. And even they have quite a lot of armor, you know, for that tier. But, you know, I don't think... The Northern Dundine generally do very well in auto-resolve. Like, cavalry is not good in auto-resolve. They'll probably end up losing there. I would fight for your people as if they were my own friend. So I think we're probably going to have to help them out. I don't know where Gandalf's gone. Bloody useless. He'll probably just he'll probably just turn up exactly when he is required. Um, as all wizards do. Hmm. Right, Gror. Wait, where did that other general go that we did have? Because we got an adoption. Is he... Ah, oh, he's over here. Well, we don't want him there. I mean, that is why Nain has come here. Right, well, what are we going to build here? We're going to build something here. Uh, we've already got the pub, so we're building up that culture. It's at 22%. Not going to get the feast or that's a bit overkill, I think. But I'm not the biggest fan of getting armories, but perhaps we should get one here. But for now, let's just get the pig farm. And yeah, that needs 50%. And we've already got an archery range, have we? Yes, we do. Have a taste of my blade. We're going to take Flowey out of there. Um, we're just going to put him in Nain's army just so that... Because that's as far as he can move. And then next turn, we're going to bring him down here to Goblin Town. Uh, build up some money. Yulstone is going to be attacked next turn. That army 
The auto resolve would see that's favorable, and they do have a lot of range, which means that we would be at a massive disadvantage going up against that to sally out. We will have to just sit there in Yulestone until they decide to assault, which they probably will. Uh, we're going to have to wait for reinforcements a bit longer before we can strike. I'd really want to take Bramsburg, but yeah, we're going to wait for that. We, we need those units. And uh, for the turning of the seasons. Okay, and we're about to get these units over here as well for our crusade. So what's happening? Good to bad have come here. They're probably going to end up taking Martelberg if we don't step in. But, yeah, we are going to struggle to hold on to your stone against these massive armies that are coming over here. We might just have to take a step back. I kind of want to... I, I do kind of want to do that, to be honest. It's not worth... It's not worth uh, holding on to right now. We can just delay them and get better units. We need better units to fight them. And... We can just hold them indefinitely at these bridges. Let's just go and take Bramsburg and leave that I unit there. And you're going to come on over here. Make sure we don't get blocked. We might get attacked by that Attack army. Which is fine. Well, it's a castle. Engage. We've got the baluster. Let's just have a look at what it's like. They've only got the, that unit in there. Let's just... Let's also resolve. We lost 167. That's, that is fine. Absolutely fine. Um, let's just occupy because this is not something that we want to hold on to because it's not actually a um, it's not a mountain province. Although it's, there's a lot of people here, nine over nine thousand. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But this needs to go to the Anduin, and if only our diplomats weren't so far away or so. So useless. Of course, I'm not the biggest fan of... Yes, oh, there's door winning. Oh, we'll go and have a chat with them later on. Oh, we'll go back to them. Construction report, though. Anon Enerod got the catapult maker. Nice! We can get one. Finally. And Goblin Town got army barracks. Is there anywhere else, then, that we can get? No, we can't get one there yet. That's a pity. Uh, but Goblin Town can now get Legion Hammer Guard and Shield Guard and the Deeping Guard. We've got loads of guards. And I think with them we'll have a much better time up in the north. So why... Yeah, we, we just need to kind of phase out the miners, laborers, and the shield shielded ones as well. So now let's get... What should we get? I think we should probably get the miners union. Just so we have more recruitment slots. Because three is not enough. We're going to be recruiting a lot from up here. Because, yeah, this is very far away. So, um, what to do? What to do? Do we just leave one unit in here in Bramsburg? And then... No, you're going to stay in there because you've not got the movement range. You may as well just stay in there. We're not going to build anything in here. And we need to aid our allies here so uh what to do what to do so flowey you're gonna come down towards goblin town first nain you're gonna come to here that tile right there and then you're gonna pick up these units and we can't attack but i think if they were to sally out we'd be called to aid them there because there is no way that in a yeah, there's no way that they can beat that. They've got the Huntmaster Grimby on there, who's now their faction leader. Oh, uh, do we need these two units? I don't think we do. No, we don't. We don't need to send them in there. We'll just keep them in the in the fort, and yeah, hopefully that works out okay. So they're gonna take at least two turns to take Yulestone anyway. But let's, let's just take this building out because that is not... There's no point in keeping that there. And then finally... D 
Dunland have got a very large army there. I'm a warrior, not a and the Northern Dunedain are kind of coming in this direction. Let's go with... I mean, as it is only the Northern Dunedain and not Gandalf specifically, we do not need to send Balin. So we're going to go in with Graw, and he's going to take this army here, which is a pretty sturdy army. And also, I don't really care. If he, I mean, he's not going to die, but if he did, I wouldn't be too fussed. And he's going to take the cavalry as well. Roman cavalry. Oh, and take... Do we need to take these guys? How many shields do we have? We've got one or spears. One, there, two, three. Well, let's, let's make sure that it's four. And you know what? Just take these guys as well because always useful to have a bit more in that regard. So that should be pretty good. Byrig is a mountainous region though. Um, and then finally, this diplomat is just derping around over here, getting blocked by everything. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Framsburg, no, you're not going to get the Axsmith's Guild. But, as you can see, we've been attacked or besieged here in Yorlstone and Framsburg, which is pretty great for us. So we can, of course, uh, attack. I don't know if we can. Well, it's summertime. I don't know. I probably should have specified in the in the rules in the beginning. Uh, is, is a sally out the same as an attack? Are you allowed to do that? Um, but... They will likely attack us anyway, at the same time as they do. We're obviously going to lose out here in Yorlstone, but that is fine. We're just going to put it on a high attack rate. Um, there can be no rioting. And that army that was here... I have no idea what happened to it. I do not know. I mean, this force has grown smaller but i don't know if that is because they just fought or that some of them you know how the ai does they just start wandering here there and everywhere perhaps if we had a spy over there we would have yes, known like let's uh speaking of spies yeah, you can see gundabad is really pushing on erebor as well but who actually holds the withered heath it looks like it is well why are they why are they just completely bypassing anazanar and they're just going three with the board straight for Erebor. That is ridiculous. But not to worry. We're going to finalize our attack then upon the Dun Landings. We're going to make sure. I don't know what they're doing either. They're like either coming nor going. But we're going to take Ostinathil with Graw. And just finally, let's have a look here that we've got no. Yeah, we've got no trade rights or anything like that. And our relations are already abysmal. So we're not losing anything by doing this. Do we go for Byrig or do we go for Arsenithil? Um, if we go for Arsenithil, though, we need to be giving that away ASAP. Because we don't want a really long border with them. But let's... Oh, we can make it there in one turn. So those guys can stay in there for one more turn. Whilst we get some more money. And finally then, Oin's Gate has got the Hall of the Seven. And now we've got... Oh, nice. King's Axes. What? 33 turns. So you're not really going to be relying on these guys uh, a whole lot. You don't get too many of them. They're going to be quite the sparse offering uh, from your... Uh, other dependencies shall we say but i think i'm gonna end it there i hope that you give it some thought the idea that was given by zeno or zeno in the comment section give it some uh, perhaps it will give you some ideas how to spruce up this campaign you know aside from just smashing gundabad and washing away the only real threat that we have um of course we are still going to be doing that but uh but, um, yeah, I really liked the idea. It really kind of... I don't know. It seemed really fresh. And I'm trying to get mid-campaign here. 
to see if people like it and perhaps in the future we can do a campaign from the beginning where people decide these kinds of missions and not like the complete like directions but like side missions to make it to make the campaign different from just a standard campaign because a lot of you guys probably have already seen um, what happens in those uh, since everyone pretty much does the same thing each and every time okay thank you very much for watching I'm going with Gandalf good